to Tennis Market. And imagine how young Tennis Market today would fare in today's cancer research belt. And to do that, I think it's important that we give them a good haircut um, and wish them into the future. Um, and so let's do that. So, this is, so let's meet Tennis Market Circuit 2017. Okay. Now, um, it's all for that slide, honestly. It's not the best presentation, it's all for that slide. Now, what we need, of course, is a research grant. Okay, really and really what that means is an R01. That's what it means. You know, in back in 1980, uh, the average age for a first R01 was 36 years old. This is now 42. The, the share of our contains awards in the research project against the best uh, in the years under age 40 is 40%, more than 40% now, that's 10%. And you can see that the PI, the principal investigators, uh, that are younger than 36 are getting almost none of these grants. Uh, the share of PhDs getting tenure tracks is just six years old. By the way, I'm talking to you later today about the roles of physician scientists in all this, which many of you will uh, cover more. Uh, and it's even more challenging because you're three years behind everybody else. And uh, you're also spending a lot of your time to make your patients in place. And so to be able to do the kind of research that you need to do, it's all the more challenging. And there have been one blue-ribbon committee after another on the stuff. Um, and so, but much or not, you know, Dennis, you know, Dennis has to try. He's got to try hard. And that means he's going to back up some publications, right? So, um, so he's around, that means uh, playing his own little tiny corner of the map. And when I say map, I just mean this map. Okay, how many of y'all know this map, right? So, uh, you know, there are places in this world where you can go and you see this on every wall in every lab, uh, and you know, like, uh, this is a cover, some of the applications are pathways. And, um, so imagine if you want to study Nick, which was behind, um, uh, the vertical photo. And what you'll see is, of course, um, you know, this is that serious opportunity I mentioned. The only problem with the field is crowded. Okay, so how crowded is it? Well, this is as of a couple of days ago, 28,000 or whatever, 18 public papers and all that, um, and 740,000 results on Google Scholar. Now, why is this important? Most important because every mentor that you have when you're young is telling you, hey, find your own little place and your own little part of the puzzle and get expert in it. Because you do not want to be in the wrong time. You do not want to be in a, you know, investigator in a crowd of other brilliant people. And you cannot survive a career in academic medicine like that. So that's why it's important. And um, you can see 740,000 results on Google Scholar. Uh, and just to put that in perspective, um, you know, this niche has 12,900. So you can see some priorities there uh, on Google Scholar. That's why people hire. Uh, those are all academic papers. And they all start to show those just to, to show the importance of this. So uh, we still haven't been able to translate. So mm-hmm. all that required knowledge is just a bit better. And so I just want you to know that I've been following five pathways, and you know, these really the man and these others, just in terms of testing their published papers over the years. And I'll make a way of doing it so every once in a while I'll sort of look and play in and do the count. Uh, but that's an awful lot of published academic papers on just these five pathways in the, in the medical databases. Um, and this doesn't include, of course, all the hot new ones in, um, in, in oncology, and, you know, it doesn't include the PCR able to the world and anything like that. So um, it's just, as I mentioned, everyone's welcome down. This is 30, almost 39,000 papers in the last, in addition, in the last 27 months, in just these five pathways. So we're producing a lot of science, a whole lot of science. And then, it's truly expensive. So, um, back in 2005, Data Lake was one of the co discoverers of T53, the uh, the Guardian of the Machine. Um, managed to calculate that each paper was $100,000. And then when I mentioned that to, uh, to Ron Pio, who runs uh, the Anderson Cancer Center, he actually laughed. He literally could not hold it last. He's high risk. And it's like 200,000, 250,000 trips of institutional money, Stanford money, and government money, and, and donor money, and whatnot. Um, and then, uh, Mike President Biden was in, up, up in San Francisco the other day, yesterday. Uh, and he, he talked about, uh, or two days ago, sorry, and talked about his paper being about 200,000. So he may have different numbers than I have. But it's still a lot, if you think about that. So if you think about that, I did a lane calculated that it cost about $3.8 billion just to study T53. And just to give you some perspective, uh, we don't really have a big working knowledge of this. There's obviously lots of tailors and clues. There's no effective treatment. There's something you try in China. But we don't have a therapy based on this. And by way um, well, this is what we spent on just these five pathways. Take a look at that just for a second. Let it sit in. Just in the producing of the medicine that this is important. And again, I think it's important. And so if the cost isn't about money, which is more than money, it's about this is what happens to young scientists, right? So, you know, to get yeah, it's circa 2014, 2017, there's just one paper like many. You can't be just any journal, but top tier journal. You can't be just any place in the byline. It's got to be first author, right? 